to? Dr David Clark. Mr Speaker, National has hit the panic button in its seventh budget. It has failed to reach surplus. It has failed to outline a plan. It is stealing from future generations through this measure by taking the $1,000 uh, kickstart program out of action. This is a government that is going to ensure Kiwis miss out, that is going to ensure kids miss out. It said that it will increase benefits in this budget, but it's giving with one hand and taking from another. It is helping lift the most vulnerable people, sure, and they should get some credit for that, but it shouldn't have to come at the cost of taking down those who are just a few rungs higher on the ladder. It's a government that has broken promises before. We know that. We've heard about the GST promise that John Key made. No GST increases. Next thing, it's up 15 per cent. We've heard about the 40 per cent economic growth target. We want to grow the economy, he said, so that exports are 40 per cent of it. Well, they're down to 30 now and they're going backwards. We've heard about the promise to increase wages by $7,000 by the end of next year for ordinary workers. Well, we know that that's just been kicked out in this budget three years to 2019. And we also know, biggest of all, that this government promised a surplus that has, has failed again to deliver. And the one that it's projecting for next year is wafer thin. It's less than a rounding error. This is a government that has produced no surpluses in seven years after a Labor government that produced nine surpluses in nine years. It is a government that is failing. It is a government that has no vision and no plan for the future. Mr Speaker, they've broken their promises to grow jobs, to lift wages and to not impose any new taxes. Cutting KiwiSaver will reduce savings at the very time that we need to increase them. We need, to, we need long term thinking, uh, not short term thinking. I am sure that Mr Bishop will try to argue that cutting the, the contributions to those who are starting saving for the first time is somehow a long-term plan. But people at home will not be convinced of that. I don't believe that they will. They wouldn't have signed up for it in the first place if they thought it was a bad idea. And we know that already 2.5 million Kiwis have signed up for Labor's KiwiSaver program. They cut the, uh, the employer contributions, uh, the member contributions last time round. They halved them. They halved the employer contributions last budget in 2011, these, this government here. Uh, and we know that they have a plan to cut this back further. They're weighing up the options. How do we cut it further? In Australia, where they introduced a KiwiSaver-like scheme shortly after the Labor government introduced one here in the 70s, they have kept that scheme. And they now have $1.3 trillion in retirement savings. And this KiwiSaver scheme is growing. It's a proud scheme, but it's only in its infancy. And they are wanting to cut it again. They cut the super fund uh, contributions. Now they're cutting the KiwiSaver kickstart. It's a government that is out of ideas, that is grimping and saving and costing middle-income Kiwis to try and prove that it can get to a surface, surplus eventually, and it's failing. It's failing even to do that, even to achieve its own biggest election promise. Half a million Kiwis, half a million, that's 500,000 Kiwis, will be deprived of the $1,000 KiwiSaver kickstart payment over the next four years. That is a shocking statistic. It is growing in popularity and the number of people opting out is reducing over time. We have heard, uh, we have read, I should say, many members of the House, I'm sure, will have studied the IRD's evaluation of the KiwiSaver, their final summary report uh, from 2007 to 2014. They examined KiwiSaver and their estimate uh, was in the 2010 uh, survey that additionality, i.e. extra saving, on top of people what people would ordinarily have saved, was 36 per cent. And then in 2013, they said that had not significantly changed. It is a fact. It is a fact, and the minister shakes his head. It's his department. It's his department. Shakes his head. He, has, he is out of touch. This is clear, and it is working. And I know plenty of people that have signed up for that scheme because of the $1,000 kickstart. And in fact, if the government really believed that that had no effect, they wouldn't make this legislation retrospective. There's silence on the other side of the House. They wouldn't make this legislation retrospective if they didn't believe it worked. 
They have no answer for that. They can't have it both ways. If they really believe it didn't work, they wouldn't make the legislation retrospective. They would allow people to sign up for it while the bill was passed through the House. But they know in their heart of hearts that's not true. That incentive is there, and it does encourage people to save. It does encourage people to join the scheme. It's stealing from kids' pockets. It's robbing the savings of future generations in a short-sighted attempt to somehow plug the $1 billion hole in their budget that's emerged in the last year. And this is a government with $88 billion in debt, let us not forget. It pays about $10 million in interest a day. $10 million in interest a day. This is a government that's failing to manage the economy. So they've already halved the member tax credit in Budget 2011. They're cutting savings further. This is the kind of economic mismanagement that's seen them run up more debt than Muldoon did. So those Kiwis who will miss out uh, will be at home watching this. They will hear that they have missed out and they will be sorry. Uh, certainly the ones that voted for this government will be sorry because this wasn't something that was talked about. These kinds of cuts weren't talked about in the last election. Taking away uh, half a million dollars, uh, uh, sorry, half a million Kiwis uh, access to uh, the Kicksaver $1,000 startup uh, grant that comes with the Kiwi Saver scheme. And this is a country that has struggled with capital depth. We know, we know that is a problem for this country. Having enough savings to find uh, to, as a pool for investors to call upon, to grow new businesses. And those, that pool of savings is essential if we wish to diversify the economy. If we don't wish to be forever dependent on dairy prices and on commodity price cycles. The dairy industry does what it can and they contribute to our economy in good measure. But we actually need a number of other industries. We need clean industries. We need growing industries. We need innovative industries. And those industries need to be able to access savings so they can grow. We need a, an economy that is diversified and that is sustainable so that New Zealanders can enjoy the prosperity that they enjoy now into the future. Cutting savings is not a vision. Cutting savings is not a vision. And yet that is the vision that this government has come up with. They've failed the test that they've set themselves to achieve surplus and now they're trying to plug the hole by cutting savings. That will not do. It's retrospective and it's unfair. Those Kiwis who've already accessed it, uh, good on them, uh, but think about the ones who haven't. If your colleague, and I say to those people at home uh, who are watching this late at night as we pass this under urgency, because the government knows that if they didn't pass it retrospectively and quickly there would be outrage, that if your colleague, if your colleagues, you people watching at home, join KiwiSaver on Wednesday, and you at home send in the form today, they can join the scheme and get a thousand bucks. You can't. That's the change this government's bringing in. They've chopped the member tax credit. They are now chopping, chopping the thousand dollar kickstart. That's a government that's out of ideas. It's a government that's trying to fill a hole and they will claim that it won't have effects on enrolments rates. If they really believe that, they wouldn't make it retrospective. And I challenge the minister uh, to consider, there is an SOP in uh, that suggests that, that uh, date be pushed out, and I, can, and I challenge the Minister, if he really believes it won't have an effect, to adopt that SOP, to let people, to let people have that, uh, that $1,000 if they want to sign up in the next wee while. But I'm pretty sure he won't, because he knows in his heart of hearts that that 36 percent figure from the IRD, that additionality, the additional savings that this has caused, that this scheme has caused, is a number that is real. Now I'll read from the IRD report here, where it does say, they're using a, a flow measure of savings, the estimated level of additionality, uh, rather than substituting from other forms of savings, was 36 per cent. And the main reason uh, for this, uh, the, that people joined the scheme, was that it's an easy way to save. Well, that's not rocket science. The second reason was the contributions from the Crown and their employer. These are incentives, and if they believe in economics, they'll believe that incentives matter. There's likely to be an interaction between these two reasons, with the contributions also making it easy to save more. The key findings from a report this government is ignoring, and instead it is ensuring that half a million Kiwis will be deprived of the $1,000 KiwiSaver kickstart payment over the next four years. And this is a disgrace. Labor, Labor's policy is to restart this program. We wouldn't do such a thing. We wouldn't be so mean to the kids of the future. Uh, this retrospective legislation is robbing future savings in a short-sighted attempt to pay for the $1 billion budget black hole that they have dug.